Hello and welcome to Oxygen Alliance YouTube channel, where we bring you invaluable knowledge and tips about oxygen related equipment repair and maintenance. Today, you are with me, Foster Sentala, and my colleague, Chimo Matias. This is the first episode of a video series where we will take you through the different ways of troubleshooting the low oxygen period problem in various models of oxygen concentrators. The World Health Organization recommends oxygen period of more than 82% and anything less than this is considered low. In this video, we will start with two of the common causes of low oxygen purity and we will show you how to fix them and keep checking to see if the oxygen purity gets better after each fix. So, stay there. Before touching the oxygen concentrator, take steps to protect yourself from germs, so we will put on gloves. This will help prevent potential exposure to microorganisms. Next, ensure that the machine is properly disinfected before performing any maintenance work. It is recommended to use alcohol-based disinfection to wipe down the exterior surface of the oxygen concentrator thoroughly. So the first cause of low oxygen purity in an oxygen concentrator that we we'll discuss today is low or unstable input voltages. Oxygen concentrators have a specified rated voltage that they can run on. The allowable voltage range is usually 220 volts to 240 volts SC at 50 Hz. But in other models it is 110 volts to 120 volts SC at 60 Hz. Our model in particular today is the DeVille Base 525, which has a rated voltage of 220 volts to 230 volts AC at 50 Hz. To simulate a low voltage situation, I'll use this variable transformer, which has the ability to vary voltage from 0 volts to 300 volts. And I'll set it at 180 volts, which is less than the rated voltage of this oxygen concentrator. Now, I will power on the machine and let it run for about 5 minutes. Then, using this ultrasonic oxygen analyzer, I will measure the oxygen purity out of the oxygen outlet port. So as you can see, the oxygen analyzer is registering an oxygen period of around 70 to 75%. So this period is too low and could be dangerous to the patient. As I said earlier, this might be caused by low voltage input. So you need to check whether your socket is supplying enough voltage to run your oxygen concentrator. To do that, you will need to use a multimeter and then you set it at AC voltage and you measure the voltage that is coming out of your socket. So for demonstration purposes, I will verify whether the voltage I'm getting is enough to run the oxygen concentrator. So as you can see, the multimeter is giving a reading of 178 to 179 volts AC, which is very less compared to what the oxygen concentrator needs to run. Right now, I'll set the variable transformer to a voltage of 230 volts as required by the oxygen concentrator. Now, 
Now I'll plug in the machine. And then after powering on, I'll see what the oxygen analyzer will register as purity. So as you can see, the oxygen analyzer is now showing 92% of oxygen purity, which is very high above the recommended value of 82%. This shows us how vital it is to consider the issue of voltage when running an oxygen concentrator. So it is very important to check the power supply when you're getting low oxygen purity on an oxygen concentrator. The second common cause of low oxygen purity we are going to discuss today are leakages in the pipes inside the oxygen concentrator. Leakages cause the pressure not to adequately build up in the sieve base for the absorption process to work. One indication that can show you have the leakage inside the oxygen concentrator is low pressure from the patient outlet of the oxygen concentrator. For example, for this model of oxygen concentrator, the Oxep Pure ZY5AC, the normal outlet pressure is at 58 kPa. So getting a lower value may actually indicate that there are leakages inside the oxygen concentrator. Now I'll turn on the oxygen concentrator and measure the oxygen purity using this oxygen analyzer. So I'll wait for 5 minutes for the oxygen concentrator to stabilize and I'll measure the oxygen purity. As you can see on the oxygen analyzer, we're getting a period of around 65%. And the flow rate here is showing us 2.9 liters per minute. Yet on the oxygen concentrator flow meter, we're getting 5 liters per minute. So this may actually indicate that you're getting low pressure from the system. So I'll go ahead and measure the oxygen pressure from the patient outlet. So, as you can see on the auction analyzer, the pressure is registering to uh, 4 kPa, which is very low compared to what we normally get, uh, which is 58 kPa, as I already said. Now I'm going to turn off the oxygen concentrator, open it, and check for leakages inside the oxygen concentrator using sober water. Leakages can be found on the tubes and their connecting points. So whenever you have to see bubbles uh, with the sober water, it's an indication of a leakage. Now that we've opened up the oxygen concentrator, I'll put back the bacterial filter. Now I'll turn on the oxygen concentrator and use sopa water foam to check for leakages. As I said earlier, leakages can be found on tubes or their connection points, so I'm going to physically check for those connections first. It seems there is a loose connection here, so I'll apply soap and water here first before going to any other place. You can actually see big bubbles coming off from the uh, out of the flow meter. So I'll first uh, switch off the oxygen concentrator and tighten this. So right now I'll use the spanner to tighten this.
make sure you don't over tighten it just make sure it's firm enough if you over tighten it you may end up damaging the o-ring I will now turn on the oxygen concentrator and test for leakages again. Using the soda water foam, you can actually see here that the bubbles are gone. So I'll continue doing the leakage test on other uh, potential leakage points and see if we get any more leakages. After doing the leakage test on all likely leaking points, we found that the only leaking point was around the 4 meter area. But also take note that these leakages can also be found on seed beds. That's why before installing the seed beds in an oxygen concentrator, you should perform a seed bed pressure test. You can learn more about this process by clicking the link in the description of this video on Oxygen Alliance YouTube channel. I will now switch off the oxygen concentrator, assemble it back and test to see if the period has gone up and also if the, uh, the pressure has improved. I will now turn on the oxygen concentrator and measure the oxygen purity. As you can see here, the auction analyzer is showing us an auction period of 92% and at around 5 liters per minute. Um, unlike previously, before we fixed the leak, it was around 65%. Well, that's all we had for you today. We have demonstrated two common causes of low oxygen period in an oxygen concentrator. In the next part of this video, we shall explore the other causes of low oxygen period. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can't miss the next one. Bye, Bye for now. now.